Happy Wednesday, Calvary. This is time for your word of the day, and we're continuing our study in the, the little letter of 1 John, written by the Apostle John to the church uh, and to us for us to learn from these uh, timeless truths. And I'm picking up at the beginning of chapter 2 today. Uh, listen to what the Apostle John says. John writes, My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know Jesus if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in Christ. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Now, this is a great challenging passage because a lot of people freak out when they read that because their lives are not perfect. So John tells us uh, right up front in this, in this chapter, he says, look, the reason I'm writing this to you is so that you can live the life that Jesus has called you to live. You see, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then God not only created you, but he saved you and he calls you to be his servant, his child, to live in a way that reflects the glory of Jesus. And so that's what we're called to. And John says, I want to help you to live that life. In other words, I want to help you to not sin. Uh, sin is our rebellion. It's our defiance against God. So if we're sinning, we can't glorify God. But sin is also self-destructive to us. See, God wants to bless us in everything that he does. In every command that he gives, he wants to give us life and hope and peace. And whenever we engage in rebellion against God, whenever we decide, I'm going to do it my way instead of God's way, uh, we destroy our own lives. Now, we tend to hurt other people as well. It might be our spouse, might be our friends, might be our children, might be our parents. We, we hurt other people as well. But um, we destroy our own lives, and, and that grieves the heart of God. And so God is calling us to live a holy life, a life that is set apart from sin. And, and at the same time, we know that all of us are sinners. Uh, we're addicted to sin, we're born into sin, we've perfected sin in our own lives, and so we're rebels, and so we're going to mess up. Uh, every one of us sins, every one of us has evil thoughts in our hearts, uh, evil plans in our minds evil actions through our hands and feet and whatever else we are using. And, uh, and here's the good news. Since we're going to sin, John says this. He goes, listen, Jesus is for you. He says, we have an advocate with the Father. So Jesus is the one who's taking, you know, not our side. He's not arguing that we were okay. What he's saying is, God, let's forgive them. Let's forgive them. And why does he do that? Because he is, fancy word, propitiation for our sins. Jesus was the atoning sacrifice for my sin and for your sin. Personal. It's, this is really personal. We need to understand this personally. It's not theoretical. It's not for those people over there. It is for them, but it's for you and it's for me. It's personal. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for your sin because he wants you to be saved. He wants you to be forgiven of all your sin. And so he's our advocate, and he's always for us. If you think God's mad at you, you don't understand what John is saying. Uh, God may be grieving your self-destructive choices. He may be grieving the hurt that you caused others, but he is for you. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to live a blessed life. He wants you to find the joy of Christ. But that's found in repenting of our sins and seeking Jesus. Now, the part that people freak out, a lot of times about this is the validation of salvation because he says by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments well uh, we're kind of all screwed there because none of us keep his commandments not not perfectly not all the time not 100 percent. so what is john saying john tends to speak in extremes it's kind of an all or nothing black or white kind of wording but what he's really talking about is what is your intent which way is your heart leaning which way is your life leaning are you trying to obey Jesus? Or are you disregarding completely and totally uh, the commands of Christ? What, what is your heart's desire? Do you want to obey and simply struggle to do it? Or do you not 
care at all about what God says. See, that reveals your heart. That reveals where your heart is. Because uh, look, I'm a sinner, and I, and I make sinful choices, and, and I, I, I grieve that I do, but I know uh, immediately that it's wrong. And I repent quickly, because my heart's desire is to obey Jesus. Now, if you call yourself a Christian, and you never even try to follow Jesus, then um, listen to this words uh, again of John. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Uh, if there's no conviction in your life, if there's no desire to follow Jesus, if there's no uh, grieving over your sin, then you may want to go back and check the relationship status. Uh, don't worry about what you know, preachers have said or what certificates of baptism you hold. You need to ask yourself, have I experienced that life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ? Because if I have, then I want to obey. And I'm going to strive to obey better and better every day so that I can walk like Jesus walked. If that's not your goal, then we need to talk. If that is your goal, I'm praying that you succeed because the more you succeed, the more blessed your life is going to be. God bless and I hope you have a great, great day.